So pleasant, so easy, so simple. Just do nothing. And the world will go along and do everything that you expected. Because everybody is just so right in the head. Okay, wake up. Get out of bed. Just put your pants on, put your whatever dress on. What, what, what identity will you have today is the other problem. We don't have our sense of ourselves anymore. Somehow, I don't know where that went. And all that is being used against you. Everything that's a question. Everything that you think is not a question even. Oh, I know so much. Oh, it's useless. Oh, it's hopeless. That's exactly what they want us to think. And those with the plan that think that are winning. They win every day. Every moment is a win. And yet there's millions of us. A few of which. Minuscule percentage come behind the woodshed or listen on the broadcast. Uh, replays, archives, or ucyd.tv, or click over at minds.com. Thank you there over there. Uh, what you all are doing there is uh, you're be actually beating YouTube right now. Uh, pretty pretty fascinating on the amount of interest that's there. We got billions of people on uh, YouTube and a couple thousand, ten thousand, dozens of thousands, I guess. I can't, I don't know the number on Minds, and and Minds.com is out outstretching, out interesting. Interested in, in the broadcast, which is cool. And so what, what is the, but what, what, what's the problem? What was I saying last week? Okay, now what you're going to do about all this? What is going on? What are we doing with what we think we know? And as I say, you won't understand whether you know something is right or wrong until you go out and, and test it. You test yourself. You put yourself in the fire, in the line of fire, wherever, over the flag, over the target, get the flag, whatever you want to call. And some of you aid the cause, if you will, and I thank you specifically here to, I've been here 2000, uh, 2017 on mines. Thank you for all the bonus points that you've been donating and the reminds and everybody else is reminding. Uh, eventually I'm going to work out a, some kind of a, a thing to do with those points to promote the, either the, the account or the subscriber or the content. And I haven't figured out which yet. And I'm not getting much information back to understand how how to go about doing that. There's so much to keep up with anymore. And I have felt that this was coming and I may be kind of moved out of the ability to keep up and it's pretty much looking like that even though I didn't want to, I didn't think, I was trying to hope I wouldn't uh, have this happen. There's just so much and every day there's something new to go ahead and tack on to. So I appreciate all the help everyone's been giving again up front today. Uh, for those of you on recast that, that continue to listen, broadcast, over there at UCY and uh, recast on Thursdays, this broadcast Sunday on Thursday. We come up right up after uh, Rock the Boat on UCY on Thursday. And so I, my reference to Ron sometimes is kind of awkward because I'm not talking to him <laughs> right before. But at any rate, uh, UCY stand uh, broadcast this broadcast all the time, and thank you for doing all that. Uh, all the re-promotions that are going on to get the word out, I appreciate all that. Uh, but the problem is, is it doesn't matter how much information that we know. It's what are we doing with it? And I, again, a question, a request came up. Uh, can you can you talk about something like avoidances and things? And, and I and the problem is, is the particularity. When you get down to actually doing avoidances, you have to know the particulars. This really is law of the land. And every case is very much its own particular thing. And I've, I've explained, even though I don't know if you appreciate what I'm telling you, how certain <laughs> this stuff is. When I tell you one case, you have two properties sitting side by side to each other, and you go address a particularity about each case, and the whole cases are comp can be completely different, absolutely completely different. It's the same thing on remedies and things in that. So while I I chafe at the bit to explain certain things, and I I will only do so general generally because the specificity, the particulars are very important. It, it, every step of the way matters, and I don't like it, but that's the fact. And uh, so I just wanted to convey that it's not that I don't. Oh, and I got this, I think I got this, I remember right, I just, there was a comment on YouTube. I stick to one subject. Well, I do stick to one subject if you listen, not to insult you, but I stick to the subject that says get knowledgeable enough to start doing something. And I come every week to try and find all kinds of different subject matters that will show you really there's not that many paths to doing something. It's just what which particularity are you going to choose? Once you do that, then, then, the, then the path, the real restricted path starts to develop. And that, there's a whole lot that goes into that. So while I, part of me wants to tell you lots, uh, it's the it's the loaded gun syndrome. I can't do a whole lot because 
it don't work, it won't work, and you'll think I'm nuts about how it works because you don't quite come with a problem that we resolve. You just come with this generality, which people love to do. This is the Internet's full of generality. And, and I, I don't know what else more to say about that. It's uh, find the particular wrong you want to make right is all I really come up with. I mean, as whatever people think of what I'm saying, that's what it is. Uh, people uh, sarcastically respond to me all the time, knowing what they're saying. It's a truthful observation, but as I said before, it's applied wrong. You apply it as a sarcasm. You don't apply it to resolve the problem of the existing reality, like the injustice of the so-called justice system. What are you going to do about that, folks? This is supposed to be your life living in in some free nature. And we, we missed the point when they said the, the the government's free. It's a free government. Yeah, you're not. The government's totally free. Those in government, actually. The government's just this framework. And so we got to put things into more proper perspective, and we got to get more into the point. Once I get, if I got have people that are, and sometimes these things are sensitive. We can't even make, we can't even publicize them ahead of time. But if I can get people to get focused on certain things, we can start working with better particularities. I was asked particularly because it's a general knowledge thing right now with the Bundys. I've offered so many response answers, folks. I, I can't even tell you, and then no one really perceives that I'm doing that. So I don't know what else to do because I'm saying exactly what they have to be doing. And it's not coming. And when the execution comes down, I, I explain to you how to see the the the, the error, and uh, that shows that's another education process. And it's being and things that might be might look to be done what I've suggested aren't done correctly. And I'm yet to have some anybody produce for me how what I've said was done correctly was done. And this is a real problem. Now, I have really no judgment beyond that. It's either, and it's in the face of a corruption. So we got another problem. But that's neither here nor there as far as an excuse. And I, I don't, you know, I try not to denigrate too many things, and maybe it's a joke too, but people take it serious. Uh, you know, I would call it the peanut gallery. Those looking on at the Bundy issue, you know, I don't call it the peanut gallery, but that's what we are. We're just the peanut gallery. Uh, have no input, just observation. We're just a bunch of uh, groupies watching a system uh, that's got you in control. But, you know, there's a whole ton of stuff that the peanut gallery can actually do. And I just don't see anybody do. I see lots of complaints about what's going on. I see lots of recognition of the injustices going on. But I don't see any real paper to uh, pen to paper type stuff. Led to the paper bit it, it better. Oh, yeah, everyone goes to go to video on the Internet. That doesn't do anything, folks. Uh, it doesn't do anything to make a record, I guess is the point, except that you're whining and complaining. You need to go into the system and find and expose every facet of its corruption. And you need to have documentation so it's not opinion. As I said, people may not ever appreciate this. What we did in the 2013 uh, injunction exposed the whole and entire thing. You can't look at what we what happened in our case, which is a denial, a constitutional denial of justice, which not even Trump will touch, which shows you how bad things are. I don't care. He just come out and said he's a genius. Will you tell me the genius that continues a, a constitutional denial of justice that bears upon the whole security of the nation? This is beyond the warring part of us. This is us ourselves. This is a lie, a lie of a system. And until people get beyond their opinions about it, and we start to put that out, I don't know what else more to do but direct you to certain foundational positions. And you need to take foundational positions, uh, not like what I've heard. To, uh, heard someone send me an email link, oh, there's indictments coming down about 9-11. And I listened. I, it didn't even take two minutes to listen to the tape. It was complete trash. And it's being passed around like the thing, like, oh, there's indictments coming down. First, In the first couple of minutes, you could hear the judge they talked about wasn't even in that court, and that court didn't exist. I don't mean, I'm not talking about what I talk about in statutory not incompetence. It just doesn't exist at all, period. And, and so there's all this nonsense that gets spread around, and everyone gets all fired up, and it won't take a few seconds to learn the real basics of something to go after it. Is our, It's going to be our demise. So I don't even, I'll stop right there. I don't care how you go about it. You're going to have to figure out how to go about it. It doesn't matter what I say, how to go about it, if you find a better way. And I'm open to that, but there's not, no one's actually moving any way, let alone a better way. And the peanut gallery has a lot of power here. The peanut gallery is that mass, that pressure that you put on that, that system is set up to diffuse and to take the pressure off. If you don't understand this dynamic, we're not in a, a stable condition, actually. We're in a controlled condition. So anybody that uh, wants to offer about well, going to the system to get an answer, no, you don't go to the system to get an answer. You're not listening to me, or you're being divisive, or you're purposely a troll. 
You don't go to that system to get justice. It's injustice. It's the definition. In fact, when you look at injustice, you see the justice system. Figure that one out. It's just us. Just cause. Just cause. Excuse me. There's no just cause. And it's just what is. And that was, we weren't supposed to, that was on us to stop. There's so many ways to get at that. It's, it's, I mean, I'm beyond explaining it. There's a, a f- numbers of ways to prove that out for us that uh, there's every reason why we have o- occupations on us and are just takeovers. And I, maybe I'm ignorant enough to believe that all oh, y'all squawking about nothing uh, doesn't prove a conquest. Now, you don't throw it off. It's, you're, de- you're dealt. You're done and you're dealt with. So I don't know what to say more about that in some regard, just to come here and try to tell you I see stuff, folks. It's uh, not I'm not the only one, but I see stuff that apparently that keeps people understanding that there's things to see. And I've been warning you off of certain things. I've been watching you, t- telling you, watch the transparent actions. Uh, don't don't get lost. I mean, look at the world, but realize you're, it's happening to you at home or has happened to you, these things. Uh, let me just bring up, real, back to my tabs. Remember last week I told you that this thing in Iran was like, it looked like the setup. It looks like the what, the the seven countries in five years thing. It looked, the color revolution. As soon as I saw it's a cl- color revolution, everybody should have realized it was a setup. And I predicted, if it's not a prediction, it's just what's going to happen. I said, you're going to watch violence erupt really quickly. And it was, I don't think it was a couple hours out of my mouth, the news was coming. It was violence erupting in Iran. This is just a pattern. If you, you can't, if you don't get that, uh, you, first of all, you're, you're way behind. But even if you do get that, You've got to understand the dynamic and start to turn around on what they're doing about it here where you live. Similar dynamics. And it wasn't but uh, hours. Uh, Twelve killed in Iran. Security forces accused of opening fire. What did I tell you, folks? This is not, I didn't plan that. I'm not a seer. You just watch it. It's historic, this thing. It's a historical response of this of the CIA, if not also in cahoots with the uh, uh, British intelligence and all this other nonsense. All these other warmongers. Uh, coming under the color of the white knight, and uh, again, this fraud, it's a felony, it's a treason, uh, against, it's a, it's a war crime, uh, how they do this. And we, we, uh, sit, a, sit as crickets, but you don't think that this technique is being, it's a color revolution in your life at every point, you're missing the entire thing of what I say. At 12 killed in Iran, it was hours, just hours after I'd said they're gonna have to do, they're gonna be going there. Folks, this is a setup. They're trying to take down Iran again. Whether the Shah of Iran was an input, a CIA imposition. So, this is uh, writing on the wall. We can we can ignore it. Or we could say you know we can get rah 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 behind it. Uh, Trump was in on this thing, uh, promoting it all. There's a whole series of things that came down. A very interesting expose as well of the hypocrisy, which I wanted to focus on. And if you start looking at the, uh, as I've told you before, I found out in journalism. Not that I'm a journalist so call, uh, so much, but not that I've ever done that. But when you look at stories, I realize uh, equating what happens around the world and how it can relate at home. I used to take, just for grins and giggles, I would take a report It was written, a story, uh, a, re- a so-called report, news report, written for some other far-off land. And I would just take that report and I would change all the names for something familiar to a local area around me and, and, and name towns around me instead of the foreign names. And do you know that there's really uh, no way to tell the difference if they wrote? It just depends on what the names is they put in these stories. They're they're boilerplate stories. I found out years ago. All right, boilerplate story. So this is the this is showing you there's a there's a formulaic formulaic plan that can be laid out and make and people are oblivious to it. That's the transparent part. Okay, and so this is how this works. Well, right during this uh, this thing in Iran. And I want you to consider, like, your eco-terrorists at home. They, they come and do this rah-rah. They do this insurrection stuff. They come in and make lots of rioting inside your, your counties, inside your governments. And they're just imposing a foreign intrusion. And you don't really see it that way. You think it's a cause. And they come with plausible reasons. And that's another thing. You see the reasons being spoken of are universal across the foreignness of it. Everyone speaks in the same language about how, about the target. Uh, and then you start to see who the who's the players may be as well. Their language tells us. Well, immediately on that, you, we saw Israeli minister wishes Iranian protesters success. And this was very interesting too, with something that comes out later in the week about what who is is attacks. 
And so you keep these players involved, and you start to put them in the proper perspective. You realize it is, is, is us, and you realize that the attack on Iran is for the benefit of Israel, which is just a tool of uh, the, the Brits and Washington uh, to take over a, uh, a another another people under a fraud. And we've been through a lot of this as well. Uh, that you see, Israeli minister wishes Iranian protests. Let's set up a whole other idea in my mind. Uh, uh, and it was an interesting comment about these Iranian protesters. I didn't look that close. I'm just looking at the surface of it. But someone that uh, I find interest in his comments. I'm not so sure now whether or not how, how actually comprehensively knowledgeable he is but because of some of this. Uh, but uh, a comment came out, which I thought was very interesting. It was um, through one of the links on Twitter. Uh, says James Wood, God, God bless the women of Iran uh, who are risking uh, their lives, I guess. And he goes on and on. And I sent back a Twitter and I said, you realize the cause of women of Iran is a stalking horse used not to help women of Iran, but if successful, destroy an entire nation, killing millions of people, including women and children. I asked the question, what's it called? Someone embracing rainbows, uh, color revs, uh, while swatting at snowflakes, because his, his, he was going after someone's comment who was lay, who claimed that she was laying in a fetal position after reading Trump's twitters on this Iranian thing. And I'm asking him, do you realize that these are there's a stock there's stocking horses, and and the women of Iran is a stocking horse. It's no different than the Indians, uh, the Indian uh, tribes over in uh, the Dapple. They're they're the stocking horse issue. Uh, this is what how this thing works. It doesn't mean they don't have an issue. It means that that issue is being used to be exploited. Uh, well, James Wood didn't respond to me, and I don't know, you know, I don't really know how the connection works and all this Twitter stuff. I just put it out there. I'm just wondering what's in people's minds, really. Uh, when, when you saw a color revolution coming in, why are you swatting at the snowflake that lays in a, in a fetal position, who has already agreed that, in a way, they're not capable of coping, but realizes that somebody who's on the other side, in this case, Trump, is making decisions that are really advancing the cause of the destruction. And no one seems to want to address that part. And I don't know why. But it did come out right during that time about the Israeli ministers, uh, you know, supporting the protesters. And then you see they're getting attacked. And I said they're going to be attacked because the, the, the foreigners want the, the state to attack them so it looks bad. Now, Iran, Iran did a pretty interesting thing on how to circumvent that. So the... Uh, they're they're figuring out how to minimize this uh, attack. It's a very brilliant attack strategy. Uh, it's very difficult to stop, but that, I think they've quelled it. I don't know if it's true what they're saying. Uh, ultimately, that in the last week they have been able to put it down. They called out the foreign invasion part, and they put uh, down only that part that looked like they could and they could supposedly prove it was a foreign invasion. But I think it was, so I can't deny that their need to do what they've done uh, on this. But we need to look in and see how, what the hypocrisy is as well. Well, immediately coming up after this question, and I'm asking, you know, you realize this uh, women in Iran condition of protesters. This is the stalking horse. There, there's the there's the criminals behind all that using this. These are the people, the extremists, the t little real terrorists that are causing uh, changes, uh, not regime change. They're talking na national national destruction here for some unde undeclared, really undeclared reason, uh, just the fact that it, they, they want to. And so this is, again, and it's all a proxy. So they've learned this this lesson, too. You don't go do anything yourself. This is why the U.N. was set up as well. You, you see all this, folks. But um, uh, Max Blumenthal, and I don't know too much about this, the politics side. Uh, I, I think he's a Democrat guy, but it doesn't matter. Uh, some Maybe he's some, uh, some what do you call, a politician. But it was interesting, his response to this uh, this issue uh, about the Israelis, prote uh, Israelis uh, uh, agreeing uh, to, to you know, success on the protesters. Uh, and he said, Max Blumenthal says in a Twitter, big protests in Israel. So he's calling our attention to what's been going on in Israel, which hasn't made the news much. The people are finally getting wise uh, as to how their money is wealth is being stolen and squandered on terrorism. It looks like they will not take it any longer. Iran is watching very closely for human rights violations. It was a political hit against what Trump said. Exposing to us, which is something that was in the news that we missed, if we didn't know about it or isn't promoted, that the people there's people in Israel that are promoting are protesting the very similar types of oppression. And I just want to point our attention again: the governments are are just death; they're just destruction. 
And the people are being oppressed no matter where you go by these, by these systems. People in the systems. And I want to call without going too deep. Remember, you know, I was a little aghast a bit when I found it out, that Hitler had, uh, what, the, in the security forces, was a Jew who attacked other Jews. So called. I use this word Jew very, very low, loosely. You wouldn't do that if you were actually the religious uh, or pious type. But this is all name titling problems as well. This, these are all stocking horses as well. They're used as a front, the, the, the false front, the, the spaghetti western. And we, we watch it and believe it. Uh, but uh, so to confirm that, Press TV came out. And I know like I, uh, Press TV is Iranian, te- tele- uh, Iranian broadcast. But you're looking at the two facts and talking against each other. And we just take the information as we see them. But I found it interesting Max Blumenthal is admitting that there's people in, uh, in Israel that don't like their regime. And that's really not even a regime. It's not even a state. It's just this, uh, it's this uh, they call it the occupying force there. This is a, by definition an occupying force. But set up by whom? Well, we got the Britain and, and the United States supporting it. But Press TV comes out and says anti-regime protesters hits the streets of Tel Aviv against corruption amongst Israeli officials. Thousands of protesters march on the fifth consecutive week, calling an, uh, on Israeli PM Netanyahu to resign. How many have heard about this at all? I mean, I've been kind of watching it. I don't study it much, but I just look at it and keep track of that. Uh, that it's going on five five uh, consecutive weeks. For that. They've been doing pretty you know, quite a bit of protesting. Picture you want it, you get the, you get the broadcast or get the link. And so my question on all that, do, do senior Israeli ministers wish their own long-suffering anti-regime protesters success as well? Well, this is the hypocrisy, folks. It's not a, it's a rhetorical question. And it's self-evidently not with the hashtag self-serving and hypocrites. is another two hashtags. And I wanted to remind every people in my, uh, people that want to read it in the Twitter that remember, democracy means mob rule. And I said the people of Iran better watch out. Remember, we bring we, the United States government and Britain, and the coalition brings uh, the rule of oh, law and democracy everywhere. It's a destruction, and people haven't recognized that. It's it's the Bar Association as well. That's international. That's also sitting in the UN. That's the, the legal advisor to the Holy See. And I find it interesting that the Holy See is not actually a state, but Israel can be. They call it a country. Are you kidding me? Is anybody what is? Why does anybody point this stuff out? Maybe you are. Maybe we're not loud enough. But all these things make a list of, of invalid points to invalidate the color of the authority that they're using that we necessarily should be, where we are interested, be taking account of. So do senior Israeli ministers uh, pro, uh, su- wish success to the Israeli protesters, the anti-regime Israeli protesters? Of course not. It's complete hypocrisy. Until we start to sit down and formulate ourselves in ways to document this in more formalized ways and make it more public knowledge, more obvious, uh, all this nonsense across the world is, uh, continues. And what was interesting, and again, humor being a very good vehicle, uh, somebody apparently an Israeli, uh, an Israeli comedian uh, <laughs> pops up and actually does what I told you I, I could do when I, I learned about doing edit, video editing. You can put words in people's mouths. Well, they literally do it. And now it's even easier. Now you've got all this technology that actually take the words, their mouth will actually enun- look like it's enunciating the word that you've replaced it with. And w- what's fascinating is when you read, and I don't think I can get it to play, or at least it's not, not wanting to play. Well, what does yeah, it sound go. like? Yeah, what does it sound like? It finally started working. Um, listen to this little uh, 45 seconds, and, and we'll see. Uh, this is a comedian who takes a Netanyahu speech and instead of uh, saying the word Israel or their their people, he actually installs the word Palestinians. And you'll see, as I told you before, uh, these are boilerplate speeches or reports, and you can just replace a different people within them. And uh, you, you just look for these similarities in these reports, and you'll see what I'm talking about uh, throughout it. But this guy, this comedian, actually pulls this off. It's pretty uh, pretty interesting. All you're doing is sitting, seeing Netanyahu do the speaking here, but the words have been altered. Uh, to replace Israel, Israeli to uh, to Palestinian, and and it makes uh, you know a complete uh, mockery, if you will. The com- com- comedian makes the mockery. Now let me see if I can play this, and if you can hear, it, 45 seconds worth here. Uh, listen carefully, and this would have been, uh, I think, what could have been said by anybody if your focus was to exalt the Palestinian cause instead of destroy it. This is Netanyahu speaking with his alteration by a comedian. Like if he did, 
But I'm sure that fear will not triumph because the Palestinian people are smart. They're sophisticated. They are proud. Today they risk everything for freedom. Sadly, many European governments watch in silence as heroic young Palestinians are beaten in the streets. That's just not right. And I, for one, will not stay silent. My regime tries desperately to sow hate between us, but we won't succeed. And when this regime finally falls, and one day it will, Palestinian and Israelis will be great friends once again. I wish the Palestinian people success in their noble quest for freedom. I wonder so, what it so there, sound that like. was a, So that was a, you know, pretty straight up. It could be stated, uh, stated either way. And this is the mirror that you start seeing in the world. This is what I see. This is what comes to me is the uh, hypocrisy of what's going on and the thing we have to start cutting through. In this case, this comedian brings out that hypocrisy. I don't know how well it played for him. I don't know what what, he's, uh, what his condition is now about doing it that way. But, uh, you know, there may have been some retaliation. Who knows? If, even if not. Uh, this is how we we can find and see the 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 brutality of the cover that's being used to exalt literally governments over people of of any of either government remember we have the Iranian people being destroyed here we have the Israeli people given that they could be called Israelis uh, there and then you have the Palestinians all showing this inter uh, this uh, boilerplate plan and it, all, it, all it you do is you just fill in the blanks. It's kind of how they do law legal. Same thing. If you, if you fill in the blanks, even remotely close, if you're an attorney, you, you'll win. And we've, we've got plenty of evidence of all this. I won't, this is one of those specificity things. If you look very carefully at, which I've just done because I've had to look very careful. Again, more point, more to the point. Take away every excuse. Take away error, every error that, that they can claim you didn't fulfill the, the statute. Uh, is why you even do this. And then there's no reason for them, they have no reasons to deny you, but when you look at what the uh, sloppiness of the attorneys are relative to what the statutes say is a requirement, you start to realize it's all just a show as well. And uh, this is uh, this is the, 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 the professions union protecting itself. This is on a global scale. You have the politicians protecting themselves, the regimes protecting themselves. It's all boilerplate if you start to see it that way. Now, I was talking about one of the parts as we start listening for the similarity in the language that's being used, if not identical language across the world on any particular subject matter. And you can start identifying who the players are, who the who the gangs are. Well, I don't study it so well, but it kind of, kind of came as a surprise when I read, uh, because it didn't occur to me, I'm not, not assuring the players, but I read another story on the on the money moving through this week on this deception that's going on, that we're supposed to hate the Iranians, they're supposed to have a be hated by their people. No one knows the Israeli people are, are having problems too with their regime. Certainly the Palestinians are suffering genocide. Uh, we would hope that Netanyahu would follow his own advice, even if comedically adulterated as such, because it's a better uh, you know peace on earth, folks, if that's what we really were looking at. But a story came up here, internal to Iran, going back there, about who you might be able to tell the players were. And it uh, occurred to me, uh, that the United States led with this discussion, uh, again, that Trump statement and then Haley, uh, these words, these sentences came out of their mouth first, which caught my mind when I read it from here. Uh, Iran's former president, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, arrested for inciting unrest. And what I found fascinating is one of the reasons why he was, uh, he's been doing this apparently, why he's been uh, gaining notoriety again. He was, uh, I think, uh, he was like the president or somebody of Iran for eight years, and uh, then they have their elections and he was voted out or couldn't run or whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, but one of the statements that it said that he was running on, one of the platforms for this that's been gaining steam for a few months now, this is not just happening, but it's been going on since uh, quite a few months, was focusing on, the, the statement is focusing on the fight against corruption and is his main emphasis attacking the rich and corrupt along with severe criticism against the government for squandering public funding intended for the people's welfare, and relative to Iran's fight in support of, of uh, Hezbollah and their fight against is is, which is is us. That statement, squandering the people's money relative to the support of the war on terror, is exactly what the United States led with a week before. And now I'm wondering who this Ahmadinejad guy is. Who got to him that their language is, is identical? Identical, folks. I mean, just, that's how I picked it up.
Now, I don't know if you're hearing all that, but this is what I, I, ser- I just kind of glean so-called the notice for these little tidbits, if they're there. And, and this one was there. So, th- again, they're right in front of everybody's face. This thing is played, executed so well. The players are inside the gates, in their countries, making up stuff. We won't ever really understand the truth either. And the government has to respond in certain ways that they can't allow certain things either. So it's a big, uh, a big problem that uh, this is this planned attack on multiple fronts is what I want you to start paying attention to. As I told you, the, it's the mirror over there. It tells us what's happening here in your country, United States of America, and every country, actually, that runs through uh, an agenda, a foreign agenda, that's trying to bring on these United Nations agendas, which all nations are agreeing with. So no one shut it down. So don't think that any nation is kind of out of this. Uh, there's no higher calling here. It's just how they're going to influence you to agree uh, with the positions in order for them, you became placated to agree with how they accomplish what they need to do generally. And so in the same week here, we see now Ahmadinejad speaking United States language, which I didn't remember him doing that before. So well, who got to him? Or what's been going on there? Uh, they've got, you know, everyone's in the, you know, there's, a, there's a assassins in the gate, so to speak. And we got this report now that comes out openly uh, that, the United States gives Israel a green light to assassinate Iranian General Soleimani. Now, why? How would this even be rele- uh, I mean, a bit, how would this even have air to to breathe in the past? Is another problem for us. That would have been really a war crime on its face. Would have been condemned. This is open now. This open season now. And this shows that the, you know, I don't know why Israel would be having to be given a green light. So that story seems to be a little bit odd. They were never, ever uh, having to be given a green light. They have open license to go do whatever they think they need. And you were watching this during the Syrian situation. And the people over there, Syria, Russia, Iran, they have a serious problem. They can't just go ahead and stop uh, stop just anything coming in from Israel. they got to kind of take that from them while they're focused on the more important uh, problem. It's a, well, Definitely watching the priorities that, uh, being dealt with in, in Syria. And I think that, uh, definitely so, uh, notwithstanding the United States presence and its lack. And the other thing is you see the United States has no purpose there now, and yet it won't go away. And there's really no force and effect to do it because it's a bully and it's a brute. It's the baddest military in the world. And I'm going to hear a lot of people, yeah, you all the USA, USA, USA. That is the wrong attitude here. If we were the baddest, actually, we would be able to use that in reservation, and our authority would be in our diplomacy, absolutely. Now, that said, that's all a game, too. The point is that you would be making different, taking different positions. Trump wouldn't be leading the narrative underneath this same methodological fraud that people pick up to say, oh, it's we're protecting the women. Remember, folks, let me, if you didn't pick this up, uh, the women, the international motives are, that use this, uh, the, st- the, the, the stalking horse method is women, the children, and the indigenous. Remember, so they're using the cause of the women in Iran. This is international play, if you didn't pick that up. But who, where do we get the United States give the, the right to give a green light to begin with uh, to, uh, 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 to this thing that's not even a state, it's not a country, it's been given that by the bullies and brutes and the oppressors, uh, given the status of that, in order for it to be the mercenary tool that it is. To go kill somebody, folks. Do you understand this? When did, and first of all, when did you, do, do, uh, Israel ever ask uh, for permission? And then this is just a promotion to let you know that this is the game. This is what's going on. It's through Israel to protect that interest, not because there's a right to do so. And in the same time, that we are hearing that the so-called green light's been given to kill a high ranking military officer in Iran, is, is, goes to war with Hamas for not hating Jews Egypt and Egypt enough. I thought this was a fascinating dynamic. But remember, is, is, is us. Remember that Hamas was just handed uh, Gaza, uh, more control of Gaza. Uh, Hezbollah stepped back a little bit, but that's for Lebanon as well. Um, the the political factions inside are trying to orient themselves in Gaza. Uh, Iran supports the the Palestinians. Uh, that Israel that is is would claim that Hamas doesn't hate Jews enough is what Israel would do if if is is was its proxy to attack it, giving it full license to go back and attack 
and support the is is cause. This is a brilliant action here uh, from a strategic or tactical uh, action, but it's it's the United States and Israel again using their their proxy in order to foment a so-called hate in order to justify their action when they're the one that's actually doing it. And so this is a method that goes on to get you to they get to claim there's a it's in like an inverse uh, hate. You didn't hate some other group enough, so we're going to attack you. Happens to be the same people those people you hate would want to see attacked by a proxy and gives those other people say, see, we told you so, Hamas is no good. Perfect. Perfect stuff. And if your gameplay, if you will, your ideas aren't at that level, uh, you're not, you're missing the bigger point I see in the United States in ecological terrorism and all this stuff that goes on that I see this way as well. This is the uh, the sleight of hand, most of the magic that happens in front of everybody's face. It doesn't have to be as high level as a, what you call a hate crime, which is, you know, a stupid term, all invented anyway. Or you don't need to be looking at a, oh, it's a, you know, what they call anti-Semitic. That's all a lie too, right? We can prove that immediately. Just by looking at the people you would be talking to as being the Semites. It includes the so the tribe of Judah, which is not Jew. They've just been identified as the Jew. I guess you could reduce the the sound, the word to that, but that's um, an adulteration as well. But it's a whole bunch of tribes of people are the Semites. And, and so we get cut through, we cut through the stalking horse of the terms, and we start seeing who the real, real issues are. But this was a brilliant thing, a uh, uh, tactical move here, to say that Iz Iz was attacking Hamas because they didn't hate Jews enough, when in fact Iz Iz is a mercenary group uh, for the Jews. Now the Jews are clear to do whatever they need to do to support, aren't they? And now this is becomes uh, becomes a, a savior in the world. How brilliant these people really are! Now I don't buy it for one second. I, a lot of people may not, but this is what runs this world through. This is what's going on and gets traction and is allowed to continue. And I'm telling you, this stuff happens in a lesser uh, lesser offense, if you will, in your countries uh, right now, inside your the people that are making decisions, your, your departments of government, your agencies, all this works at the same type of thing. If you look like, without getting too deep onto it all, it's what, how the CDC runs it. It's what, when they're supporting, when they're supporting their mercenary, uh, you know, their mercenary groups under Title 50 to go after you in the, in the pharma. They blame, they blame, uh, some in, uh, somebody who really has no power to do anything, but has an effect and a force and effect on your mind. They say they're the one, the end-all, be-all uh, enemy. Uh, they have a third party uh, go after them, and they sit there as the regulatory power, right? Because you're just the you have the you have the power, the real power. Now you have to. The point is, so you know, what's the point? What's this? What are you looking at? You have to subvert that. That's the end point, not their shenanigans. And this is why I tell you what I do about how to subvert that power gets subverted by certain. Ways and not, there's no certain way to do it. You look in any particular instance, as I say, you find what those ways are, and that makes your short list. Uh, that's kind of esoteric. It doesn't give anybody a direction. The, but the point is that's I can see in the way I'm descri- describing it to you. That's exactly how you take care of this. It's not immediate though. These are literal people dying here. People m- machinery being moved based on these conceptual things. Uh, these are the ideas that that move matter, folks. This is the interesting thing about our minds. It has no, there's no real, no physical, tangible thing we can get a hold of, but it ends up moving matter, and that matter kills, and that should tell us something about ourselves. But uh, so here's a very interesting tactic. Let's get is is to blame Hamas uh, for not hating Jews enough. Perfect, perfect. And they did. And so it's all part of this process. It's showing us that there's an attack going on uh, over there against the Iranian people. The attack is on against the Israeli people. This, the attack is certainly against the Palestinian people. It's just an attack. And who's the underlying part, pr- promoter of it or supporter of it? It's the United States of America and Britain. So you, you can do whatever you want with all that. You can give it any name you want. You can be, you can, you can call, call out names. You can do things that uh, get stuck in the, in the memes of the problem. Or you can step back and say, okay, those are all the tools of war. Uh, none of which are going to help me. Where do I, what do I use? And you have to re, reorient the battlefield somehow 
And that just takes an analysis that's, I think it's possible. Whether or not what I'm saying can, well, can't do, where you got, where you got nations going at it, you and I are probably not too influential except for how we, what can I say? How we analyze and explain what we say. Try, and, and if I'm, if I can take my own, my own example, how I'm attempting this, well, not, I hope I'm attempting, and the only, I'm doing it, but I'm attempting, is the attempt is in the reception from your side. I'm attempting, uh, I am conveying to you a condition. It may be beyond us, but I'm conveying a condition that has certain parameters of reapplication in different ways. And that's the analysis I want us to do. That discussion is what I want us to start conveying to people. Not this short-term negative wordage uh, titling. And I hate to even go there, but I'm going to have to because it keeps bringing it to, and I'm not even versed in it. Just don't go there. But uh, like always using the word Jew or Goyim or whatever. I don't even get into it all. It's just too, 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 what are, too how many times am I going to say the word T-O-O here for you? It's just too. Uh, it doesn't work. It doesn't get us anywhere. It doesn't solve the problem. It, it just, anyway, I don't know. It's so much it does, it's not right. And that's just one. We, we can call it the, and even when I do it, I call it the eco-terrorists, although, I, I mean, that's provable. They're eco-terrorists. I don't know what to say about it. They're people that are not a, it's not a belief system. It's an action. They are, they put their, they put their belief into act. They actually affect matter in the world. Uh, there's a, there's a, that's a, that has to be stopped. It's this, this action that's going negative, that's no good, that has to be stopped. So it's not a, it's not an ideological attack here. There's no titles to attack. It's the axe. Uh, not A-X-E. So, at any rate. So, I'm attemp- attempting to convey, or I hope I can convey, that we have a condition that has uh, reasons and foundations that have their outcomes that need to be interfered with and essentially stopped eventually. The momentum, again, the mass starts to move. It's just like physics. A mass starts to move. It takes some energy in certain ways to see either deflect it or stop it. And if you've got, like, what you perceive to be the, what, what, the unstoppable mass, well, then maybe your best answer is not to stand in front of it, but deflect it. Just take it off its, take it off its course. That takes a little bit of analysis, and then it takes what? Action. What I've been trying to, try to explain. It's, everything has its, uh, its thing. Now, I ended up biting up, a, a biting off a big, a big chunk, maybe it was maybe maybe kind of big, not necessarily too big because it's we're still plugging away. None of us are hurt. I told you we do things in a way. Uh, we got my colleagues and I that we're not in trouble. We don't do things to get in trouble. At every turn, we're exposing the problems, and we're hoping at some point some people, more people, come to bear to to to, to see that and then do to, to help and not not make excuses. It, it's not palatable to a lot of people. I realize that, but that's not the problem. War is not palatable generally, and so I don't know what else to say. Uh, I'm at, at a loss beyond that, uh, but we so we can call people names, or we can say, okay, those are the people, those people we're calling names that are our target, but we're not going to get at them at, at calling them names. We actually it, we actually bolster them. In fact, this is the brilliant way they did this. Is is goes after Hamas for not hating Jews enough. This is brilliant. This is exactly like this, the definition of of how the how, of the gameplay uh, that we have to uh, learn how to interfere with, uh, and hopefully, really arrest, stop expunge it, ex- expert, extirpate it, just like the Jesuits would do against anybody found not agreeing with them. And that that requires action. And I'm hoping we, we come in a bigger a better a better idea of what that that action is. And so and, and so I, I think that's enough right now. I hope you understand from the beginning of the broadcast I'm I'm exposing a one subject matter thing. It's the same thing. It's this thing we're up against. It's examples of how the plan is a, is put out in front of us in the notice. We're told all about it, and those people get what they want unless you interfere with it correctly. And I can't no, I can't know if it's been done correctly, but Iran has been doing some interesting avoidances to not inflame the condition and bring it back under control. And I think we need to look at that as well. And so this is a very delicate thing when one nation goes after with the way this, the types of uh, techniques that have been developed. That is really just it's really advanced by the United States of America, and, and and the proxy is paid to do this. It's a Israel. It's paid to make these things even more formidable. How would you like to be paid to be focused on on something, one thing, and and something that you have passion to do, or the the calling to do, or whatever the the, the sense the internal ideological necessity to do. How good would you become 
if you focused yourself and just willingly, spiritually, just just poured yourself into it, is what these people uh, are doing. And we are going to be hard-pressed to keep up with that level of integration. But there's always Achilles' heels, and that's what I'm asking us to look at. Right right now, let's say United States of America, the injustice we see in the Bundys, that can be exploited. Nobody really is. Uh, they're hoping on hope that this judge continues. Oh, they call the judge out, should be removed. Oh, they call on sessions, should be removed. It's all to for naught. It's a certain way to go about doing that that may become important. Not just not just mentioning it. And as I look up, I see uh, the word, uh, the definition for exaction. That reminds me of something. I don't know if I was going to get to it or not, but uh, the word exaction, people are missing it was called out, my attention was called out to something was going on, taxes, theft. I'll touch that right now while I saw it. Moving over, another 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 diversion gets us all wrapped up, and how we don't rise up to the totality of an idea. Uh, the word exa- exaction was put in, uh, what the definition is in the RLM chat. And uh, it's a, I'll just tell I've told you, it's a wrongful extortion. What people are missing within the context is that it's applied to a civil right. Uh, the definition It's a definition for a civil right. And so people are going through this taxes theft theme uh, dialogue uh, thread on on Twitter, missing the entire point about analyzing whether or not it sounded better than taxes theft or taxes extortion. We're missing the entire point that that's your civil rights. doesn't matter how you think about it. It's a wrongful extortion uh, against you. And nobody, so everyone gets involved in bickering about whether what sounds right, what does it feel about it, and then no one understands what the uh, oppression is. Or even who, who, who can begin there? To even you don't even get close to beginning a plan, a tactic, a strategy, a whatever to start to begin to understand enough to stop what it is. Or what I say more importantly, avoid it. Stop complaining about it. People don't appreciate this whole point. What I say, you don't walk into a justice system and expect justice. No, you out it, and there's a certain ways to do that. And so uh, we can we can bicker amongst ourselves on what should be sound better, what the best meme is. It's not going to solve a thing ever. You know, what do you know? Fine, doesn't mean nothing either. That I'm telling you that means nothing. Till you go through the nuts and bolts of what I tell you about the problem with the taxation and the imposition of civil rights and the status that you're presumed, notwithstanding your innocence, and how you can make a record to get rid of all that and then attack attack the constraints of what was coming against you, the government against the constraints that it has, and make a public record. Until you've got that down, and that's not really that hard to do, uh, you're doing nothing. Making the excuse, so you're just doing it to get along, uh, is doing nothing. It's it's aiding and abetting the, the felony against us. This is the, the main point, but the methodologies are really kind of the same around, across the board. No different than jurisdictions as I've told you before, these, these judges wear different hats. Now, you, you can look at one analysis is there's only two things. It's either uh, law or equity. That's it. Uh, and the, the so-called law ends up being admiralty. They've joined it all at the federal level. And then you look at the states, and there's not much difference. So we, there's a whole analysis there. But even so, you got common law, commercial law, admiralty, equity. you got all these different types of uh, administrative, bureauc- all this stuff. You can the, the courts have different hats. The judges wear different hats depending on that. If you've done enough research, instead of complaining about it all, and you started organizing it up, you'll start seeing there's threads of consistency. The difference and distinction is only to the term used between jurisdictions or authorities. And if you know how to do the, they told the magic decoder ring in a way, you you have the translator between the jurisdictions. When you know one jurisdiction speaks in one way and another speaks in another, and they are applied in their specific their specifics that way, but that they have the, a similar impact between the jurisdictions, and you stay on those, then you'll be able to travel between the jurisdictions when a judge goes around trying to lead you by the nose, as I've told you all this before. Is that defeating the system? Is that expecting it? No, that's anticipating. That's what they're going to do, and I've got the weaponry. I've done the study in order to understand that's going to be the case if I find myself there. You're smarter, more intelligent. Forget the smart. uh, That's technocracy uh, upon you. Uh, Intelligent. You're more intelligent to avoid the thing. How do you do that? Well, I've talked about that, too. That's this supposed supposed administrative imposition before you get to uh, the so-called court of justice. And so I don't know, again, I'm talking in generalities. I can't give you a specific. I can specifically talk about, like, exaction is tied to taxes and punishments and pains, and that's your civil rights. How you go about any particular response really depends on, really, the condition of who you are in front of, what you're talking about, 
uh, what's involved, all the politics that might be there, the general corruption, uh, what tools you have available, uh, what you can do to out it. Again, the Bundys have a, a plethora of things they can be doing, none of which is happening. And in particular right now, we see there's a complete destruction of, of the idea of justice. The mere appearance has been blown so far, has been pe- surpassed so far. I hear not, I hear crickets on all of that stuff. But, so anyway, here's the, here's a neat, uh, a neat uh, dialogue here this last hour or so, uh, talking about the international way that a country gets uh, set up and to, for a takedown, all the players that you can see start coming together. They come together before the fact. You see them implement the plan. You see how the techniques and strategies are working. And if you start taking taking a step back and just analyze that, I'm telling you, in a it's not as a in a lesser capacity. Those same methods of of strategies and tactics are being used against you in your countries. This is well laid out. This is an international plan. This is done by international people. I don't know how it came like that, but that's it. That's what's going on. And so moving moving into the international spectrum of how they keep control and how they've been getting that way and how we keep allowing ourselves in and, and having and it's difficult, it's a difficult, um, it's a difficult problem. You're offered something, a tool that's very effective, but that it's uh, it's compromised is a very uh, delicate thing to approach. And now I'm moving into the control, that, that the global uh, control beyond machines on the ground killing people is the control, the digital control that our globe, our world is now moving in through, which all, again, has its centric, it's centered in these same people's interest. Interestingly, if you didn't understand, there's a plan uh, that should be uh, the correlation of which should uh, give you pause for at least some thought. It may be not even to the point of an opinion, just the observation. Well, yeah, these same people are doing that, and they're doing this here. What I'm talking about is the digital realm, uh, this big data that's been planned for just decades and decades and decades. We walked right into it. Uh, that something came up I needed to uh, talk to you a little bit about, and I hope I can do a little bit of justice for as, as similarly as I'm going to talk about it, because it's something, it's a tool that we all need. I'm using it right now. You're using it to hear me. It's just a computer technology, and um, I don't want to get lost in the things maybe that you're not interested in, uh, but I do need to, again, broach this idea of the techniques and tactics. Intel, get it, gaining intelligence on an adversary is like critical. Again, I mean, I think I heard the Syria, the uh, Assad actually had, they found around a town, uh, a town was full of, uh, of Syrian army spies inside of, uh, of one of the uh, terrorist groups. So, uh, in, they were gathering intelligence the whole time, which is to the, certainly to the benefit of the, uh, of the government in defeating this terrorism. And so there's ways that it kind of boggles my mind how they did that without, you know, we heard lots of people getting, uh, executed and maybe that was the reason. They started getting the idea they were infiltrated, but they couldn't figure out a way to to uh, get rid of the infiltrator, the people that are inside subverting you, those that are in your gate, within your gate. This is what's going on in, in about everywhere, and, and it, for different reasons and different ways. It all looks different. No, a gu- there doesn't have to be a gun available or a tank down the street for this to be happening in, in a place near you. So they've gotten this in technocracy, this control grid, which we hear Israel is, is critical in, in understand in, in being a part of. Again, being paid to do so, and so you'd expect the bre- the best in a way. And I don't so that to, so someone claiming that they're the best when they've been paid to be the best is kind of what do you, that what do you, that's just an ego trip. Of course, you better be the best. And so these are the kinds of tools and weapons that we have to be careful. They're the people themselves. But there's a thing that came down in the in the architecture of of chips that makes us all vulnerable. Uh, it's been said that uh, now the, the companies that were responsible to stop this uh, in the inception of their architecture, and I want you to understand this architecture thing. That's the way the chips are made. Has has now been found out, in what, and just a couple have been found out. I'm sure that there's others have been found out to have major. They call them flaws. No, I think these are part of the plan, but they're called flaws, and they really are serious, serious things that companies are saying that they are taking. Uh, measures on the software side to fix. Uh, the two major ones that hit the news here this last week, and, and I again, I wasn't really going to touch it because it's kind of technical, uh, maybe even beyond me, but I, I need us to know how what to listen for. Again, the, what you're told and what you what is not told becomes important. The, the two uh, major flaws at this point, 
are called Meltdown and Spectre. Now, it's been promoted that the fix for Intel CPU flaws could slow down PCs and Macs. This fix is actually going to reduce the speed, they say, because of the nature of the architectural problem. You have to understand the software commands the architecture, which can only run as it's supposed to be, as it's been designed to do. There's no way to change that. As I told you about being a designer, we R and D. We designed like the first programmable pacemaker. I was on uh, one of the. I was a. I was a technician on that, uh, working with an engineer, and uh, his plan was uh, it's laid out. I uh, breadboarded it and uh, found over a time that there was a logic. Well, we found out later it was a logic circuit mal, um, uh, error uh, f- problem. That ultimately, over the life, over the use of the actual pacemaker, would have literally killed somebody. It would have give, it would have given them a uh, shock their heart, con, con, uh, shock their heart still, and they would have died right there because of a simple little logic duplication. And that for and this is down at the level when we could do it then, and it's gotten so much smaller and faster and, and, and uh, than before, but. The engineer added a second logical step that wasn't required. It was a four-gate NAND, NAND gate section. Very, I mean, just a minuscule compared to the whole chip. That little delay, having to go through the logic twice, turned out to become, this is the hard part of a fun, it ended up being the same outcome, but it delayed the circuit by the speed with which those gates were working to come out with that second one. And that delay, that infinitesimal delay, was in the architecture in that chip that it didn't matter what you set the parameters to, whatever the parameters that you set by software would run through that chip, and that little infinitesimal delay would give your, your patient a heart attack in the end. About, I think I calculated about six months down the road. All the production machines would have gone on, and in six months, people would have been dying after they got their thing. On a, it was a four NAND gate logic section. So I'm bringing that as my understanding of how this works at the hardware level. That it didn't matter what your software. Well, these fixes that they're coming OSs and and these meltdown they call meltdown literally for meltdown. Uh, and I won't get into how they're describing how this works. It, has to do with the architecture, how a regist- how the memory is read, how it's shared between uh, the the main uh, system memory and the user memory, and all these things. But they're claiming that the design can be fixed. The design flaw can be fixed by software. I want you to all, and I've got plenty of links, maybe too many, but you get to the blogcast, you can go through and look. I think you need to see this. In fact, there's a very nice... Uh, I think it's relatively easy to understand a description of how this works, what the problem is, what they did. And I think if you read through that description, uh, and it's why the Raspberry Pi, one of the Pi models, isn't affected. A very interesting discussion on this. And if you go and read through that, you'll start to get an idea of what the condition and the problem really is. That the other people that are not part of the com- companies that are part of this, Intel is taking the big hit. They claim their defense is to say that this is this is this is uh, industry wide, folks. Blaming somebody else for your flaw is not a defense. They call it a defense. They're saying it's a defense, but it's not. So that's your first clue. But they say that this mitigates this software fix mitigates the architectural flaw. I'm going to tell you. Look very carefully. The word mitigate does not mean solve or fix. Now it'll make it a little bit more tough. But those that are paid. To focus in on doing that will surpass and eventually prevail against a art, an architectural flaw. As I told you, in this case, more my circuit that I was uh, that the engineer designed, when he added that extra delay, it had to combine up later on down the track, going through all their other delays, and it was an incremental step back in se- timing sequence that eventually triggered a charge. A charge line, when it stepped back in time relative to that delay over its clocking, you can't fix that by software. Is my analogy to you, you can't fix what they're telling you by software. So, as I told you before, the NSA coming out and Snowden coming out, Snow Jobs, Snowden coming out, explaining all this stuff with vulnerabilities. 
I said they have stuff underneath in the architecture they know about. Intel's known about this uh, this process they use since 1995. Uh, AMD has a Spectre uh, one Spectre variant problem, but they treat it a little different. Uh, when you read how the Raspberry Pi one the one unit doesn't, you realize what they were doing. What I started to start to pick up again, looking at the generality of what we're being told, it started to hit me in a slightly different way. First of all, I really don't believe this will be fixed. It's mitigated. They tell you they admit it's it, they admit it's only mitigating the problem. That and that has to be because it can't fix the architectural hardwired condition. That that has to be programmed. That's programmed in the making of the design of the chip. And so you you can't fix that. You can block things out. You can re, uh, interfere with access, you can treat errors a certain way, you can start looking at certain errors a certain way, but it doesn't fix the underlying problem, which ends up being a timing problem between the speed with which the memory is written from the kernel, which is immediate, versus the user, which is a, like a maybe 100 nanoseconds later. That timing problem allowed a, an infiltrator to load up, uh, load, up a, load up a logic interpretation from that to gather data bits. That you over time, and it takes a little while, but over time you could start to extract the information from your memories, which would give everybody and exploit an adversary the information about you to go exploit other things. I'm holding on to this thing only because the cashless society is run on this system of flaws, and I'm really concerned for people about this this Bitcoin, this uh, cryptocurrency stuff, um, and other things. I mean, your bank accounts and all that. I guess that's the only reason why I'm concerned about. It. Otherwise, have at it, folks. Go embrace embrace your your brave new future. But we have to understand some of these things. So uh, it's a little intriguing to me. I used to be a little bit in the technology. I, I've kind of talked myself out of it. I'm getting now to the point where none of that is really that much interesting with all this other stuff that's just like in your face. So super important things. But then they throw in this tool. That's exploitive in, in its in its bare essence. It's just an exploited condition. Intel's been known about it. They have something called um, oh darn it, speculative something or rather. I'll, I'll get to it. Uh, that seemed to start speaking to me a little bit different. And this is uh, an interesting problem. For well, it was thought to be a good idea, but I think it was built in as as a, an excuse. But the, the, anyway, so security flaw affects Intel, ARM, and other processors. Uh, and then everything you need to know, I got a link for this. I wish I could go through this, but it's kind of boring if you're not interested. But you do need to know about how how to how this is working against us. Uh, you in this regard, you you would want to find the security patches if you can get them without all the other bloat. Uh, to try and patch these up to make it harder for an adversary to get at you. But you need to understand that you're not going to be safe in the brave new world. The, the technocrat, I guess that's the bottom line. The technocrats have us in this technology. What's, so how do we stop that? We start to understand we can't go willingly into the night with these people. In the meantime, like I say, the cryptocurrency, the speculation, I wish I had time to get involved. I think, I think it'd be kind of interesting to be an overnight millionaire and try to go for that. I think that's possible because of the way it works. But that's not the future, folks. That's only for right now. This is the transition point. This is the pet rock time. This is the beanie baby time. Something in me wants to really start doing a little bit of that before it's too late because the door's closing pretty quickly here. But, but still, it's, it's this problem with this flaw. You're going to have your wallet's going to be able to be had. And let me start to transition something that uh, Gary L. brings up that we don't hear much about with these quantum computing versus the AI. All right, all this is exploitable through these flaws. You can't you can't really stop the architectural problem. Uh, Intel responds to this by saying that they are making their patches will make the computer immune. But then you look carefully. The word again, the way they de discuss it, they say first of all these computer processors are working as designed. As designed was a big clue for me. They have no problem with it. As designed. And then they say their patches are making it immune. And I understand as my hardware research and development application is how these things are made. These, these chips are manufactured. You can't fix that. It's not immune. It's only immune to the higher level one who's paid to come after you. And how is that? How can they 
I mean, how can they come after you that way? Well, my experience is right before all this so-called, not all of it, but some of your higher level languages, I got a little glimpse that kind of told me I really wasn't a programmer. But I got a little glimpse on how you actually use, you actually dictate where a bit goes and where it doesn't. How tedious, folks. I mean, it just drove me nuts. But what I started to fix on, we'll get to the how you can do this bit by bit, you adjust stuff, if you're of that knowledge. And I was told back then there will be very few people that would understand this very basic languaging in order for this to happen. But they'd still be around. They have to keep some people in so they can do this. Well, I'm sure that the government keeps a channel of people that know this basic, the most basic, how do you direct a machine to do a bit? You know, where does it go? What does it put? Exactly where does it go? How does it work? That is, this is the weak, the Achilles heel to this software problem where a hardware uh, exploitation sits. Uh, there's a comment, uh, I mean, a discussion about the Raspberry Pi. Uh, the guy goes through a very interesting uh, clear, it seemed clearly, it should be most people with a basic idea of computers should be able to understand it. It's kind of interesting on how they've worked it out. You start seeing the computer science and computer math and all that. So really, you got to be lost in that world in order to understand it. But what I started noticing as I was looking through is something that uh, I've been a little um, uh, skeptical of, this so-called uh, quantum computer uh, and this AI together, where I see a discussion called, and it's how the processor works. There's something called a branch predictor that's in a computer. And this is just a process. I won't go through all of it. The branch predictor, this is all best based in spec, this um, speculation of the probability of something turning up in a sequence of, of, or of um, com command code. That is dependent on, and this is, they've been really brilliant about how they've been doing this. So that what they were trying to do is trying to fill, the computers run a lot faster than they can run the logic through. And they were trying to keep the so-called pipelines, the, the channels that have data in them full, so that the processors were work, working. And, and to make them faster, they could put in, they put a logic stream. You could put in false information as long as the, the, the stream, the pipelines were full, and then the logic on the end would get rid of the false parts. Well, this is what starts to have the problem. You have a pipeline full of information that may or may not be false. It's speculative information, data, that is being worked on. And then you have branch predictors that are working to predict how they feed the information out in these pipelines, which one they're going to select. It's all a logic-based uh, condition. And, uh, and apparently it works fairly well. Now, this speculation issue, this has been happening uh, since like 1995, and I think the 486 started to have it, uh, the, the, the processors from Intel, where they would try to anticipate what logical statement is going to be used and then insert that in the pipeline. And it's beyond me to explain or be able to understand right now to explain uh, some of the problems, and I don't think we need to get into that. What I started, I wanted to go back to is, Branch prediction and speculation didn't sound much more to than to me than the quantum computing that I was telling you about before. Except that it's in a di it's in the software, it's in the it's in how the how the hardware is going to handle the software. What I was talking about before about what it looks like they're doing is problems within the chip itself, the the uh, characteristics, the electronic characteristics. The resolution to look at those may be such that you take a probability, you speculate on that, and then you have a logic that predicts what the outcome is going to be, and you're do and you're doing such a good job at it that the probability is very good at the other end, high probability that you're right. Is really started to sound what I'm looking at here again, and I wanted to point out this. I'm, uh, this is almost, uh, if, as I read this Pi article, it started to tell me exact, more exactly a different way to approach what quantum computing is. You're working on the anomalies in a system. They say that they have space within the computer. They think the CPUs are running with dead space. They actually input information into that space. It's speculative information. 
It's based on something that they want, that they need to have happen. And the, the way it all works out ends up working pretty good. Then I started to look at this explanation of the Raspberry Pi and how it does, how this Pi doesn't get affected by it in the explanation of what they're trying to do. And I started to look at this is a, no different than I told you when I worked with a, uh, an engineer uh, in a, literally in a basement, uh, coming up with all this uh, interesting, um, well, at the time, it was quite a few decades ago, uh, military applications. And it was stunning to me, after going through a school to learn about electronics, what they didn't talk to us about, simple uh, resistors, how they really work, capacitance, how it really works, what things you can look at inside there, what these simple uh, circuits can actually do. A simple 4-bit microprocessor can do such a great amount of work with simple little components. It was just blew me away. It was just like a, kind of an, a neat insight, like a little kid in a candy store looking at what these, uh, how simple it is to do certain things. It doesn't take a lot of complicated uh, knowledge. You just have to understand the materials that you're working with. Then I started to understand this thing a little differently. That these flaws are exposing to us how the system industry really fabricates computing in a way. And there's really intelligent people working on this. They're stuck. This is their life. But they've worked out how to work with these flaws, how to work with these inconsistencies, these shortfalls, these incongruities. And they're really effective at doing that. When I, read, I wanted to, I guess, point out this, this Pi article was important. I think for the, possibly, maybe, I hope that's not a, a false lead for anybody who's interested. If you understand what they're working with here, wh when you start working on uh, probable probability, speculative probability, speculation, uh, prediction, and then you multiply that on channels, or you dedicate a computer, not that the channels are using the, the dead spots in a channel, but the entirety of the channel to do this work that your technology starts to come otherworldly compared to what's existing. Now, what it ends up being is nothing more than, than this, this uh, like climate change, this hypothesis. And if you get enough people believing that it works in some way, uh, that this, uh, this, this relation to that, again, this relation, and the problem with this issue is a relational problem. It's they call side side channeling. And you don't actually invade the system. You're looking at how the system is responding. And that creates enough information for you to make sense. You actually make sense of it. So you're not only not touching the system, you're making sense of what's going on inside the system without interfering with it. It's like spooky action as a ditch, as a, at a distance is what it seems like to me. All these terms are relatable into other areas. And if you just frame them up in that way, you'd start to see maybe that's all this quantum computing is. It's really a guess, and by golly, that something's going to happen, and then you you produce the similar system. You have a similar system, and I think I'm hearing part of the problem is they've got a, and this is a problem when I was working. You had to have chips that were so matched, you compared them between themselves, and if they did, if they fell out of certain matching, you couldn't use them. Was part of the problem, but it's like a manufacturing trick. And so I don't know where this ends up going. I'm noticing, though, this meltdown flaw, if you start looking at what's going on, it's almost predicting and giving us notice of what's really maybe going, I say maybe, really, and maybe. I don't know because I'm not that into it anymore. But it sure seems like they're, like I would connect up the thread of consistencies between legal jurisdictions, law jurisdictions, or whatever, however you want to convey that. This is a similar thing only in the specialty of electronic uh, computing. Now, I, I say that because what what's the point? Well, we're, we're susceptible to those wizards again. But I keep telling you, be careful to embrace something and walk into something. Try not to plug yourself into something, certainly, where there are magi that control it outside of your comprehension. In other words, if you have to use it, you don't put your things that your life depends on in it. And if that's the case then it won't matter about these flaws. It's your understanding about the, the flawed nature of the architecture, the flawed nature of the trust you can put in it. And you better keep it, as, as make that spooky action. You keep that spooky action at a distance. You don't allow it to engage you in a way that makes you the Hamas 
to Israel's is is attack. There's also communication coming out about the fact that this so-called quantumness, if I can side-channel everything, because I can run a computer 100% on flaws of another system, and take sequencing timing changes on that, and get the data out, I can read, make it look spooky, distant, spooky action, it is, I can read your system, because of its innate flaws, I call that quantum, and I can start hacking any system that there is, is now coming out to be a problem. But let me offer one more quick thing, something I'm a little bit more familiar with, but don't do any anywhere close anymore. I was through the time, but there's a, they're talk, they, they talk to us that they're going to program the OS and fix the patches, and this is all programming language. Well, every computer has this, these, all these computers have language. There's many languages now. There was only a few when I started to get into it. And when I got into it, they taught us and were teaching us this thing called machine code, where you literally tell a bit to turn on and turn off and where and when and everything, right down to the bit. And then you had something called assembly. You assembled these things together, uh, these these phrases together. You assembled their orient their their organization, and you assembled them into some instruction set. They now, cons now they use the word compiling today, but that's di a little different. This is the foundational use of the di of the digits themselves, the, the 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 circuits themselves, and how the architecture. If you are someone who has that kind of knowledge, there's not much that you can't get into when you understand there's a flaw in the in the system because each one of these languages can be tailored to each system. But that was. What I've been kind of hesitant on when I hear there, we were told back when if you maintain this, because there's lots of other languages, you know, COBOL, Pascal, all these other, they call higher languages. They're not more higher than they are grouping these, uh, these machine code strings together in a phrase. It's really not higher because those phrases don't have the ability to change any bit within the phrase to adjust anything and exploit anything outside the phrase. That that's what came to my mind and always comes to my mind that there's another we don't hear much about this at all. There's machine code that runs these every bit, everywhere, every how the registers, how they work, when they go, when they don't. And that's the well, we then move into assembly language, the assembly of that, I believe is the way it works. But that at that time it was just too tedious for me. I was an okay programmer in it. It was just too tedious. You can be maybe 85% okay, but if you, that 15% that you're wrong in the logic, if you forget that you put a bit somewhere that you had to clear out, you can cause a crash, you can do whatever, ever. you had to go back and fix all that. Well, I realized that I wasn't the guy uh, or gal to be that, that right up front. I always miss something. In fact, I, I do it now even when you do, when you do these little uh, uh, macros. There's a, there's a little, Oh, you forgot to do, oh, you know, that happens before this happens, and you got to go back and fix it. Well, having to go back and fix all this is kind of tedious, and it's fun, I guess, at some level. You're fixing, you're making something work, and you're making a machine function. But it's down at the basic level. It's down at the the point of the one or the zero. It's not in phraseology. That it occurs to me, and, I re, and I'm repeated when I saw the description of the flaw about how the Pi computer, Raspberry Pi, is not affected. And its description of just that very small section of how it handles the time, how it handles the, the, the logic, it occurred to me again, the software can't fix this, folks. Someone who has a more foundational basis in machine code can interfere with this. And there's that knowledge out there. And so this hype we're getting, it ends up being market hype, again, for the industry, not to be hit so bad about how susceptible that our technocratic life is going to be. I want I want you to be fully aware to look within the phrase the words that they're using they're telling you they're giving you the notice they can't do what they say the main the main one I saw was mitigate the the other one was that this is functioning as planned they don't care that it's a problem oh it's only caring now that there there's the world now knows about it which they've known we've known for years about some of these flaws and I'm not talking as an insider I'm just talking about some experience I had I, and I walked away from it I realized I wasn't going to be that programmer. I'm a little disappointed in that because look at all the cool things we can do now. But, uh, but I'm not. Again, that was just not me. I don't. I don't work that way. I'm not good enough that way. 
I get myself into stuff, but and I can figure stuff out, but I, I don't work at the level that you need to to be proficient. And there are people out there that flat do it, and then you put, mark yourself against that, and you say, yeah, that he's the programmer. So we, so we, I was learning the basics there. It just happened to be my time. Uh, I wished we had languages that we had now. I'm not, I'm not the kind of guy that does it. And even so, with the languages now, I, I don't have an interest at some level. It's just, it's, I, in a way, I wish I did, but more often I don't. And partly because my mind is so wrapped into what this harm that this oppression that we're under it seems people are oblivious to that. I am really focused on that. It seems it seems to be a, a almost a diversion to work on the computers at this point. That's why I'm only worried about whether or not it, when I turn it on it will work. Last week we were having trouble with the connection. I don't know why. Uh, we I lost the community uh, the internet for on one on one system for two days. It just wouldn't hook up. Finally got it working again. Uh, one day I told you that we could be cut off. Uh, we might be cut off now. I don't know. I don't look up at the machine much. Uh, but this is the tenuousness of this system, uh, this technocratic system. It's a, a global control by the players in the world that are using the techniques and methods against you that I see written all over the Iranian condition. And then it came up in this in this flaw. I think this flaw is a diversion to make you think, uh, give you credence, and put trust in these systems. I'm here to tell you, folks, unless you have a better idea than I've, I've come up with, it, stuff I've forgotten over decades, you better look very wary of, at this. Uh, please consider before you put your life into certain bits of this. Don't start becoming dependent on it. They want you dependent. Interdependence is the United Nation way. Every nation in there is involved with making that so. Every nation has its own protesters. And when one nation will look across and say, I hope their other protesters are successful. Don't look at my protesters. Look what Intel did. Oh, it's, it's system-wide. They're everywhere, this problem. Don't look at... I'm fine. I'm immune now. Now, for the most part, they can make it more, more difficult. But they don't make it easy to make the fix either. I've been looking around. I don't want to Windows bloat. Do you think I can find a security patch for this stuff only? No. No, they're going to... It's all tied in. Now they're showing you, folks, if you've got a Mac or an iPod... You think in your phones? You think you're escaped it? No. All these processors. Remember, Apple went over to Intel uh, quite a few years ago. Everything is is sitting there, ready ready to be plucked. You got your what's in your wallet, folks? They say Intel inside. You better believe it. There's a there's a machine code guy out there that knows how to get in your system no matter what. I guess that's really the to me that's the, until I see that change. That's really been the 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 subtle secret. The open secret, and though you may not hear about it, and I'm sure that there's not much uh, there's not much uh, uh, place for them. Well, there is in the in the security breaching issue, I think. Well, it doesn't benefit commerce, otherwise Intel would have fixed it, right? Otherwise, there's another thing that benefits commerce, so called, and we see it coming to fruition. It's been in the records, in the laws. It's been how they operate it, and it's all reduces down in some regard that you uh, will be paying exactions of every kind. And they've got a system to plug you in, just like Silo Web of Quiet Wars, and on and on and on, like I talk about, over being fulfilled right in front of us. And here is this flaw, I think, exposes not only that you're not, you're not immune, that this is planned, that we do it, it's as designed, uh, that the software is being covered, it's a stalking horse now, uh, to, to bolster their abilities when they can't, uh, that keeps you see, silent to, to understanding there's more fundamental uh, controls that you can do with a machine to direct it what to do. I mean, some of this is simply a machine code was like a, a router. It's just simple commands that made it go do around, but that wasn't the machine code. Those were just the mnemonics that ran the sequence of instructions in machine code. And then they went to this stuff called these operating systems. Like then they put a nice face on it, and you you don't realize it's actually the it's actually the 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 matrix screen running down. That's <laughs> what they're actually running with. Linux uh, users can see that. You get to see. Uh, can you want to display what they're doing? And you see just line co lines of code running fast as it'll run. That's the real computer system, and it's put together by people that are brilliant in their own right, but they're dealing with understood flaws. They're dealing with technology that's not quite up. In other words, filling that pipeline was a flaw. They were trying to, they were taking what a computer can do uh, that the software couldn't keep up with and making it more efficient. And they did it okay. 
except it offers some new insight. And I think this insight between the flaw of the mel uh, meltdown and we see this the way they discuss it, I think, exposes maybe what this so-called quantum computing is. Quantum computing may be nothing but a big side channel process. If I can put it that way as it comes to me to say. And so you don't, okay, I said it once, I'm going to say it one more time and we'll move on. Uh, how your life is hackable comes up now. Uh, how the most, uh, the people that should know better are still susceptible and that puts everybody vulnerable. Do not put your life into the technology. Do not Keep bringing the. Do not plug yourself in. Quit bringing big data stuff in. Start making a voice that you won't buy it. Don't buy it. Uh, do your own things. Older. Uh, start teaching people how to do things more, more basically. Even if that means a little bit of hardship, because the hardship and the woe going to come on you. What are you going to do when they close your account and it wasn't even the government that did it? When they stole all your your Bitcoin, you went into your bank account because these flaws were as designed, folks. If this doesn't bring up what I've been telling you about, that it's, you just can't protect against it because it's in the system. I don't know what else does. Like this is a big, a big um, proof of that. Uh, and here's how you're susceptible. Even people working with the with the government, contractors with the government, uh, suppose you would think they know better, are 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 uh, are vulnerable. Mystery hacker steals sensitive, quote sensitive data on Australian F-35s and newest spy jets. 30 gigabytes of defense-related data covering fifth-generation F-35 fighter jets as well as Australia's newest warships and spy planes has been stolen by a mystery hacker. Local media reports citing a top cyber intelligence official says, and uh, what would you think? You're going to hack a drone and all of a sudden a missile goes out somewhere on your head. Now, they're saying that this is not classified information. The point is it was hacked. Uh, Ten minutes and you're, uh, of access uh, for uh, 500 rupees, and uh, you can have access to billions of Adhar details. Someone's hacked a whole database and no one knew it was hacked, and now selling for 50 rupees the information on the Internet. It has to do with people involved, personal data from everybody. Uh, oh, it was only last November that the UIDAA asserted that Adhar data is fully safe and secure, and there has been no data leak or breach at UIDAI. Today, the Tribune purchased a surface service being offered by anonymous sellers over WhatsApp <laughs> that provided unrestricted access to details for any of the more than one billion, one bravo, illion, adhere numbers created in India thus far. Uh, enough said there. Uh, secure, not so much, folks. This is your life. This is your digital technocratic life in the future. Uh, it's going to be up for sale as well. Uh, no one really understood how it happened, but uh, you can buy this information that's supposed to be so secure. Bitcoin, income tax department is a tough spot as investors go all tech. Was uh, working the other side of this that they're promoting. Uh, also, I think it was in India, how this Bitcoin uh, in the tax department, you get an interesting view on how people having to deal with the tax department against uh, the uh, the assessment on against Bitcoin or, or bit, uh, cryptocurrencies, how they're having to deal with the IRS coming against them and requesting information. Remember, if I, you should read this to show this is the administrative side where the tax department comes after your cryptocurrencies and what answers you actually might have. And I'd say caution, uh, caution you very, very much to make sure that they're valid for you. Uh, but look at what the people are already doing in India as the government, the tax man, comes after your cryptocurrency, uh, notwithstanding the fact that it, uh, your information can be hacked, even on places that they say is secure, even in military with the military information. Uh, this is again the flaw will be our acceptance of a flawed system, a flawed architecture. And we're looking at an architecture on a processor. I want you to move your mind back, take a step back and look at the architecture of your destruction. Okay? Uh, this is all really, it's a fractal to me uh, somehow. It all uh, it's right in front of us the replicating the repl replicating nature and uh, consistency which we are taken down by. Uh, again, 
The setup of the Bitcoin is for the tax man. The tax man's attacking people in India. They are having to come up with answers. You need to see what they're starting to have to come up with. Uh, they are, there's some other ones that are available in the United States, as I've told you already. But the fact is they're coming at you. It's hacking your life because of your digital world. They're already doing it in India about this cryptocurrency. I'm saying that these flaws show you that you're vulnerable on the uh, hardware side, on the infrastructure side. Remember, the international imposition, they uh, look at bolstering their infrastructure. That doesn't mean they're building a bridge. It means they're probably building an inroad to destroy you or take control of you or have control of you. And there's more proof of this thing with this cryptocurrency. As I've told you, the, uh, the governments are coming after for the so-called value. I've told you some problems with it. Those are the things you would respond with um, immediately on the administrative side before it gets into the courts. Uh, but I told you the governments are coming to start to do this. And uh, you'll be able to do this, but there's going to be constraints. And you're going to have to learn how to deal with that. And here's another example of what's happening within this. The China Central Bank prepares to regulate Bitcoin mining. And I found this very interesting. How, how are they going to do that? Well, a lot long ago, Bitcoin sold, uh, was, uh, was low, and then it soared up a lot higher. And China's been looking at this. Remember, I told you they were the ones that were the told to commission to bring this in. Uh, I told you this quite about, uh, quite a bit ago. What China did is looked at it. So we're not going to stop the mining. What we're going to do is we're going to monitor. We're going to monitor the power of people. And we see the power being used that's not consistent with the, uh, with what we play, we think that is supposed to go on. We are going to start to limit the power of that place. And in effect, limiting the electricity to a place, uh, will limit the ability for a Bitcoin miner to do his work. Now, they can also claim that it's also good for energy uh, carbon taxes, don't they? See, so this is all working for their favor to start with. But they don't attack you for doing it. They just start making it uh, more difficult uh, to uh, more expensive or not have the ability to make the uh, make the electricity, to, to use the electricity. It's how they're going to do the mining. Now, this should, in your mind, say, okay, then we, we should be able to go off grid, if you will, have a and you've got to be careful about this too, but develop your own power source, right? Uh, solar power may be the way that they do that. But uh, just to let you know, the Bitcoin miners are going to be under attack uh, with, in, uh, with, uh, in China. And it seemed to me much different than how the cops were able to go after people that grew marijuana in the places that it's not, not legalized. And remember, they legalized it, not decriminalized it. That should have been a clue. I told you all about that. But people, crickets, crickets everywhere. Uh, so the power is going to be the future, folks, and this is exactly what the China went right to it. They've been thinking ahead how they're going to go ahead and do that. Now, you say, well, how are they going to do that? Well, if everyone has a smart meter, I can tell you by your signature, your, your electronic signature, that you have computers running. In fact, that computer may have a certain way that it spits out a certain signal out of it. But right back into the, the line filters. It gets bypassed, and you can see it on the other side. How do you think they're able to do the, the internet through the power lines now? It's similar technology. It's just a frequency-oriented pulse. It just bypasses the filter that you have back up the chain. Current goes in two ways, I told you before. It's really simple how they do this. So you get your smart meter. They can tell you're running computers. They can tell how, which units are in there by the signature electricity, electricity it uses. And so they can power you down now. they got your smart meter. Now, that's in the future a little bit, but the point is that it's there. Uh, eventually, they're just going to look at power bills, and they'll do just like they did at marijuana. You build, had a, you know, thousands and thousands of kilowatts more than you're supposed to. They started checking you out. What's China also doing? China plans to turn country's most popular app, WeChat, into an official ID system. Didn't you hear all this behind the woodshed before, folks? Uh, what can I tell you? All this stuff you plug into that you get used to using, get your face stuck in your little screen, is what they're going to eventually use around. Now, here's a virtual official ID system. In, res in one respect, at least, China's embrace of digital technology is far deeper and arguably more advanced than that in the West. Yeah, they're the ones that have been commissioned to do this. This is like questioning, like it's a question here, folks. It's not. Mobile phones are not only ubiquitous, but they are routinely used for just about every kind of daily transaction, especially those involving digital payments. 
at the heart of the ecosystem site's 10 cents uh, WeChat program, which has around a billion users, bravo billion users in China. It has evolved from a simple chat application to a complete platform running hugely, hugely, hugely popular apps that are now an essential part of everyday life for most Chinese citizens. Should terrify you folks. Maybe it won't. Uh, maybe you don't listen to me. Uh, the, you're watching China put it in place. Your your digital world is in these devices. You plug in. They're going to require that you plug in, and you're going to do it, and you're going to do it willingly, and you're going to make it so they can make it better. You'll ask for more punishment and pains. Why? Because that's their civil rights too, and they don't even have it written down. I could go on again. We could talk all about this stuff. The point is they're using these well-used apps in order to, it's like Facebook coming out and explaining they were set up from the beginning. They're made to con condition you, get behavioral modifications out of you, and you're doing it and, and by the millions and millions and millions and making some little jerk, some little pipsqueak, a lot of money so-called, uh, make him effectual in the world, make it worse for you all in the future. They work the system against against you at every point. So WeChat is an ID system. You don't think that's not going to happen eventually in other places? Uh, I don't know what to tell you. I, I don't even want to say more. I don't know what to tell you, folks. Keep keep your head in that that uh, behind a woodshed bucket of sand. Is all I can tell you. Someone will come up on you one day. You'll know why your head is head your head shouldn't have been there, but in the sand. But it'll be too late. Uh, what's ID 2020? And are you ready to become impacted by it? When I just say put your head in the sand. And somebody coming up behind you and let you know better. You're going to be impacted by it, folks. ID 2020, this is going global. Starting with the Chinese, it's in, it's in, it's in your financial world. You don't think Bitcoin's not having a problem here? I don't know what to say. They're working in all kinds of ways to constrain it, to regulate it. They don't care that you use it. That they're going to use it. You're going to use it their way, and if you don't, you're going to be penalized. You're going to be put away. You'd be just like any other common criminal. With all these flaws you hear about your phone, uh, th this is all how they do it. You're going to be on that WeChat, and if you're on that WeChat, that WeChat uh, will be the first problem. If you're not using it quite correctly, uh, they'll have another program inside that's been fundamentally programmed in the fundamentals of the computer to go see what you were doing. You can't get below that route. There's no way to get at that route. Because I was telling someone, uh, they made these highways, they put these things down in the road. I realized a long time ago, they put these things in the highway that they could uh, do. Uh, they said it was for uh, checking trucks going down the road, but which is probably true, that they're probably doing the trucks and they can tell speed and all that stuff. I realized very quickly, well, what if I don't, you know, they're going to have everybody on these systems and they're going to read your car as it goes over these uh, these coils. These big coils are just big antennas. And they can read information as you pass over. In fact, your traveling over them creates the energy that you need in order to put the energy into it in order to transmit the data they need. So it's a pretty cool system that way, but they could find you out. And I said, okay, well, I started to think, well, if I don't have the system, when I pass over the unit, they won't be able to read my data. And then I realized this is like working with Tor. you got to look like everybody else. If I don't have a system, when that car goes over coils, it creates an impulse without data. They know that I don't have the system. They can pick me up at the next place, the next uh, off-ramp. I'm, I'm toast because I didn't look like the rest. Here, so I'm thinking I'm so smart, I just won't have the, the things that reads the data, when in fact the lapse of the data and the triggering because of its impulse is what catches you. It's, it's the, they already figured this stuff out. We walk right into it. But we now see programs called ID2020. I haven't researched more about this. You have to go do some of this, but they're tying it into the New World Order. Numbering the world's population is in the works, which will affect the impact of human, every human. you got to stop being those animals, folks. And the planet from the first day of birth forward. So you find out that this is also connected to the registry. A registry. Uh, below is a schematic, as I'm reading here, the, the game plan. It's called ID2020 Alliance. And you can look that up. You can you validate it or not, folks. I'm just telling you there's stuff here. I, don't, I haven't had a chance to validate it. I just want to point out what I see. It's all connected to this digital stuff, as we've been told it's coming. Uh, and then this is the most comprehensive surveillance database probable to date and being implemented on a global basis. And uh, you can see the international organizations involved. You look at the United States, it funds a certain uh, UNICEF, it funds the JAVI, 
uh, it funds all these uh, all these international uh, UNHP that funds all these internet UN organizations. So all these countries are in on it. Uh, this is a not a not a joke and not not inconsequential. And this program is all about uh, starts to work through the uh, registration for the purposes of immunization of vaccines. This works into, again, the big pharma problem. And remember, the WHO, not the OWL, not the ROC group, but the World Health Organization, the WHO, is the broker for big pharma internationally of all these things uh, that they have figured out. Uh, and to every opposition to any natural type of response, they have figured out they want to use to control you. Uh, they are setting up a number system it is going to be through all these things, and your cryptocurrency is going to be all part of that as well. Again, eventually. No, it doesn't happen tomorrow, but it's all in the works. I won't go reading more. I just want you to know, uh, in this report, it re relates uh, to all the stories we've turd, turd, yeah, heard about uh, things that, um, things like the Bill Gates the thing with people reduction and uh, carbon, and it's all tied back together to the UN uh, transhumanism technocratic uh, condition. Uh, again, I don't want to go through. I talk about all this stuff. I, I don't want to repeat it. Uh, you know, not certainly not one topic. Uh, the, the one topic I keep want to point out is we have a thing to do, and it is to stop being oppressed. I, I guess that's my only thing to tell you. And for the last couple hours, I'm or just short of a couple hours. I've been telling you how they're coming at you and where where the game where the where to where to turn your gaze to see where the that the fight's coming at you that way, and maybe don't step on those landmines. Some, uh, so the, here we have uh, big pharma being tied into the trans, uh, transhumanist agenda and all. Again, maybe a little bit high purple, uh, which I don't think it is. Uh, but you can discount it any way you want. But but this is all tied together. You see the CDC, the FDA, the DEA, the the uh, uh, FDA all tied in with the revolving door of industry. It's all about the bottom line, folks. Uh, let me uh, remind you of Corporation Nation again. Clint Richardson's fine uh, documentary about how this is all tied together, and the, and the government is involved. Officials in the government are involved with these corporations, and the, the corporations are are uh, creatures of the government itself. And Title 50 says that we can do just about anything we need to do to do what? Just to advance the bottom line, and we'll call it national security. Yeah, pretty simple. Uh, some big pharma that hooked people on opioids now profits again from addicts switch to heroin, which is another ongoing uh, thing. If you think that this registration doesn't have ramifications, uh, we can see they can lead you by the nose until dead, and that's what this whole thing is, from cradle to grave. They're gonna, you're the beast of financial burden. This is why the finances part about all this and why they focus everything on the finances as well. It's one of those necessities you have in life. We've been told that was what, what was coming. This cashless society was no joke. Not that I ever thought it was. I'm saying that now the tools where I couldn't see the tools really to work it uh, maybe 30 years ago, I can't see how they're not going to get it in now. Uh, shame on me for that ignorance and didn't have that, that little ball to see, the to gaze into, or that, uh, that pan of water to scry. Wow, right on to us. So uh, big pharma and the opioids is a part of the heroin. Again, we have a problem now. Uh, we have a problem now coming in from the Middle East. Same, same similar thing. They're attacking uh, Hamas. Hamas. Uh, it seemed to me that is is they're attacking for. Uh, there's another. T oh, Yemeni. They're attacking for some thing that they they use there. It seemed to me like Qua or something like that. It seemed to me that CIA is looking for a new new market over there. They're attacked the, the things that the, the natives use, and we're gonna we're gonna bring instead heroin in. So we condemn you for doing something you've done forever. Uh, we're gonna bring our own markets in, and that's why they're attacking Yemen apparently part of it but this is how the big the big uh, big deal works you know, destroy people kind of like bringing alcohol to people that aren't used to it uh, we know that in the United States and what's 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 sad is that the people can't resist somehow people can't resist that they, they it brings you in and, and you wallow in that problem and you can't escape it so the control structures are set up they kind of focus all on the financial they focus on your needs more than anything else they utilize those inroads to make great profits. The agencies of the governments or the governments themselves, the ministries, are there to help aid the effectuation of this destruction. Uh, listen, they know people will make more. There will be more people, folks. So this is the, not a problem. Uh, they just have to, what they do know, they also, the generation has a memory. If they can lose the memory, then, you're, then as, a, as a people, you're pretty well done. 
they just get you to the next point if they can. This is that vigilant educated masses that we were told about uh, that we haven't been and why we're at the problems today. And then the crickets that we be for other any reason, whether or not that's just ignorance that I'm here to tell you, so it can't be that much ignorance, you're hearing it. So uh, that's now just a willful decision not to respond or make an excuse not to respond. This is the attack. Uh, those of us that are involved try not try not to participate in much of any of this stuff. Uh, we do our own little way. We figure it out. We talk amongst each other. We find uh, remedies and we don't make excuses. Uh, some of the things are a little bit harder to get away from. One of the things that coming up with big pharma, big agra, all this stuff, this genetic engineering, now genetic modified corn found in 90% of all tortillas. This is from Mexico. The, the people there have no choice but be uh, eating a GMO corn in their tortillas, a food staple. What are you, you going to do about that, folks? I mean, I guess you could start growing your own corn or finding the corn that they... Uh, that they don't do GMO and start start grinding it up yourself if that's what you want to do. But, you, you know, that's going to be, like, impossible. So I don't know what to say. Uh, you just watch people being taken down. We, uh, we, see, we see what the GMO has evidence that it does to your gut bacteria. That affects your nutrition, how you respond. Your body, that's, about, uh, your, that's your life, your gut bacteria, how your body digests uh, minerals, how it handles uh, excuse me, the the nutrients, how it handles that. That's your health. Uh, the point one, that's the foundation right there. You mess with that, you're messing with people. And they don't care that they're messing with people. And the agencies don't care. It's all about, really, the bottom line. It's what can we extract from these people. And we got them so busy that they don't know more to do. And all this comes down over time. Uh, you got processes that go down inside the system that people don't understand is going on, uh, and I, I understand you turn your way yourself away from it. It's the same thing. I was a, crit very critical of the DAPL, no DAPL thing. People weren't looking at the processes that are there and then complaining that they were being de de denied. And I'm saying, well, why don't you bring your evidence of the thing that you prove, unless it, what you're saying is a story. And a lot of it was a story because it was a setup. They were the stalking horse and didn't realize that. Now, you don't have a clue about how this is all working against us. How are you going to fight something like this? Well, you start to look around, and you start to find things, little clues. I don't know about Mexico and the tortillas. It's no different here in the United States if you think you escape, folks. This is the thing, my main problem with the, any of this, uh, these main foods. You can't tell. You don't know. The government's coming out to say you can't. You, you're not going to know. That, that should have been a clue. The right of free speech now taken to abuse because the government says it's okay. We can't. You don't, you don't have the evidence that you're being hurt. And then they don't let the evidence in? Well, why? Why don't they let the evidence in? It's be probably because you don't engage it, as I've been suggesting you can't. So what do you do when you see this stuff, and where do you step in, even though you don't have a proof? You start looking around and seeing things like this. There's a little story that I read, and a little story that said, a little report talking about, and this is going to the United States and the FDA, and how you address these agencies, notwithstanding their um, they their decisions contrary to reality essentially and to promote the revolving door and or the bottom line uh, was a little statement that was made that I picked up on it says that the FDA will never abide by the Pearson decision the FDA will never abide by the Pearson decision well I don't know anything about the Pearson decision I don't even know what the FDA was never abiding by within the context but I have the internet and I can go do some research and this offered me another insight of how you approach a problem that may even be a little dis distant, but you can find within the process that's required of failures. And then even when you're found against, there's still a chance based on these other so-called precedents within the context of the administration function of how they're destroying your life. It doesn't require that you become a criminal. doesn't require you go protest anywhere. doesn't require that you go sit in endless meetings. It just requires that you look at a subject matter that's supposed to be handled a certain way. Uh, you can get records from it. Uh, you can sit at your home, your computer. You can look and see what they're doing and then start testing it against what needs to be done. As I talk to you about all the time on the public lands, public domain nonsense, uh, that we get, we get shoved down our throats. And until we had a bunch of people start looking at it with the right words in their mouth, well, the Bundy stuff happened. See, that's the problem. You, do it, you start doing it the way you thought you had to instead of seeing that it had there was a failed system already. 
And that, that needed to be, a, the underpinnings of that needed to be addressed. Well, so the FDA will never abide by the Pearson decision was an interesting statement to me. Boy, that's a, that's a slap in the face of uh, what a decision would be, isn't it? That uh, an agency bureau rat can do this? Well, they do, but that's because there's not a lot of pointed uh, attack. But the FDA is one of those uh, agencies that they're not going to follow this Pearson decision, whatever it is. It's also the ones that's agreeing to certain things that you found are no good. Maybe this is why. And so here's your in. My eyeballs say this is your in. Those of you that are interested, I really, I'm still disappointed about your DEA pot stuff. That I didn't get a letter from anybody or notice that, hey, I sent my notice into the DEA about that pot thing. It really fries me to see how many people enjoy uh, cannabis. And then complain about the connect conditions and will argue about sessions and all this other nonsense about what's coming down about all that. And it's coming down like I told you would be coming down once Obama got got out, how this would be a shifting again. But the FDA will never abide by the Pearson decision? Really? Well, so what's this Pearson decision? I just went and got the Internet and found a story from so, from an attorney uh, that was discussing what this story about all is. I got I read it up on it. I looked at the found the Pearson. It's a Pearson Shalala case. It's, it's a people, a company that was uh, attacked, but essentially attacked by the FDA for not listing certain things on their label when they made so-called claims. Uh, the FDA made a decision. They wouldn't accept some of the information. They didn't do it quite right. If you look through that Pearson case, it explains this. The court explains what's supposed to happen to give you the bullet points you set up to find out how, this F, how these agencies are supposed to work, notwithstanding that the FDA will never, they say, follow the, 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 the Pearson decision. And it says and shows you that even if the FDA made a wrong decision, and it did have to go to the Supreme Court, so you have to consider all that, but you might find somebody sympathetic, like an attorney like this other guy, who may bring it forward to you. It's just a matter of building your so-called network up. And you say, wait a minute now, okay, they may say they never, but in fact they can't, and they have, and so I have a cause, and I can go after that. And you can overturn these administrative uh, decisions on certain, for certain reasons, if you just set it out that way. You give yourself standing and the cause that it hurts you somehow, and then you then you get to come in and where they where you were attempting to bring a certain a uh, certain knowledge and they denied it or based despite that knowledge made a, a, a decision that became arbitrary and capricious or whatever the other standards are for because of it you now have made your right to be the one that has the right to stop it. So I don't know about FDA never. But guess what? We have other remedies, see, we, we can bring to bear. And without knowing the specifics of this, I can't go into real isolation on it. But just say they're claiming in this that the bureau rats are completely immune. Now, I don't know that, folks. I don't see any place that it says they're immune except the systemic bias of the system itself. Okay, so you may have two targets here. That's fine. Because we're living in a, everybody's getting hurt, injured by these systems that we were, uh, apparently supposed to be stopping, uh, that you find out what Pearson says, you find out where you can pry, the, pry them off their rock and that their, their statement, their decision may not be one, and you now have found how to get at them. Now, I, I say do this because it's FDA, it's a big deal, but, I mean, most people wouldn't involve themselves, but this is the same problem that happens locally that destroys you locally. And so learning about this at the federal level is just a fractal of how it works down locally. It could be just talking with somebody, how they end up becoming uh, obstinate. Now let's go to the obstinacy. They will never handle the, do the Pearson decision, which was a reversal of their decision. Well, if you can, for a federal official, you can show that what they're doing is a color of authority that denies you uh, even a civil right that they claim. See, civil rights are actually the Ku Klux Klan uh, rem remedial action of 1868, I think it was. So be careful too much. But it gives you a list of, and essentially it's uh, in your state you'll be looking for extortion and coercion. So you find your state law that the FDA wants to never impose Pearson and they'd make a decision to harm you. You bring against the official the fact of the extortion and coercion. And you hope, hopefully in your state it's a felony. The ones I've looked around, it's a felony. Uh, both of them. Then you have the omission to do right. That's another two felonies. The omission to act in law and to use it as a color to harm you. The color of title to harm you. They don't have that right. That's essentially what you're looking at in the um, 20, uh, 18 U.S.C. 241-242 statutes. 
for all you patriots that read that and want to just cite it, but don't ever ever move move on it. You have your own state statutes. You find a state violation for a federal official that's violating under state law. Now you've got a hold to be able to go to what? An injunction. A mandamus. You get to shut them down in a collateral attack. You don't go through the process that they have control over. You use that process to out them, to go after them collateral. You want to talk about side channel attack? Yeah, folks, it's there for you. It all depends on how you frame this. To me, it's anymore. You want to do a side channel attack? Well, learn your writs. Le learn your, your remedies in the equity jurisdiction. Quit fighting it all. Will you make a? Will you win? I don't know. I mean, that's up to you. Some people do. Some people screw it up. I, I don't know what to say about that part. But if you do it correctly, you're making a record that they. Uh, it doesn't matter that they they say they're not going to be uh, listening. You sue someone and you put the teeth on them that they might go to jail uh, under a contempt charge. I think they're going to be thinking twice the second time, and they won't until someone does. So I got a bunch of links here about this uh, statement that the FDA was told by some insider of the FDA to some attorney that the FDA will never abide by the Pearson decision, I looked at that and said, okay, well, that's a challenge, isn't it? They have no right to not abide by that decision because it, it sits in the due process part, doesn't it? This is not something that they can change. No, this is just happened to be an off, an off thing I looked at. I make a big old deal about it right here. It means nothing to none of you. And I'm telling you, this is the, the seed of a knowledge right in here that you can look, and then you turn that, what the requirements of that agency were, you can turn it in your own state, you can turn it inside your county, you can turn it some code enforcement officer, all the same things worked all the same way. They have to have a basis for what they do. Is it easy? Not necessarily. If you come at them right without uh, too much hyperbola, possibly you'll get them to start answering the, the making the right answers ahead of time so you don't have to. That's my that would be my my uh, uh, my advice, and I have people I work with that do be way better than I do about that. That that's how most of the stuff we get done now does. We just show them the sense it makes just to follow the the parameters that are laid out, so we don't get ourselves into a problem. But I have a an inter to me it was interesting. Uh, you can go through and read. The FDA was overthrown. It shows it's possible. It shows there's a standard. It shows their obstinance, more importantly. And this is what you're up against in every federal agency. Now, that shifted just a little bit with Trump getting in, but there's no, I'm not, that's not my signature uh, ratification of what's going on. It's still corrupt. And this is the problem. Again, when you see Trump uh, it's talking to the Iranian people, when I know that's a stalking horse, and you should know that's a stalking horse, and then it goes to the plan of overthrow of the government, then he's, he's an executive uh, chief officer in a war against Iran. I can't trust what he says now. And none of us can trust all these people. I don't care how genius and stable they are. You better have your own stable genius, and it better be in, in residing in you if you want any residency. It better be in you. You want no rulers? You go out, you know, go stick your head back in the sand. You need rulers. You need to be the first one. Well, I can hear all the people talking against that. Too. That's not what I mean. That's what, exactly what you mean if you think about it. You don't know that, but that's okay. You'll, you'll fight with me on that, that interpretation. But, like I said, it works both ways. Be careful what you've uh, pigeonholed yourself into. So, a bunch of links for that. Uh, information misused. There's a they'll misuse this information, as I told you. To Trump, the, uh, the Ahmadinejad, the, the the all this stuff gets misused when the government wants. But you go ahead and try and do, you step up and try and do this and use that same information to do right. And maybe the government don't like it. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose. Whoop ass feels like.
Son, you just opened a whole case of wolf ass. 